Roger. Uh, do we just need to know how many patients, how many casualties we had? And I've been a historian for over 25 years. And I'm telling you, there's a lot of remarkable courage out there. But uh, Bill's story is one at the top. He's a hero in my mind because it's just not normal for a human being to uh, do what he did under those circumstances. He didn't have to go out that day, but he chose to. We were really in a mess on that ground and he stayed there and helped us. He wasn't out there as a combat soldier. He was out there to save lives and he gave his life saving lives. He was just one brave individual and I am thankful every day that there are men like him. Why are you here? Because you're here. In April 66, and my unit, 180 soldiers, and, and myself were ambushed by 600 North Vietnamese. One of the worst battles in the war. It started out, we were on a search and destroy operation. And it was a battalion size operation, meaning the, the uh, three rifle companies, Alpha, Bravo, and Charlie, were had separate missions. And we were looking for a larger North Vietnamese unit. We, we walked into this ambush and, and nobody could get to us. Everybody down! What they had done is they had formed a horseshoe and we walked right in the center of it and they closed the end. They had machine guns in the trees, they had artillery zeroed in our area and they just opened up. It started off loud, I and mean, that's what I remember the most, and that's what I dream about the most since when I have the bad dreams is like how loud it is. The fire was almost so thick you could see the bullets. I mean, really thick, and that's all you heard for, like, for an hour or so. There was so much firepower that the trees were actually falling. We were taking heavy casualties. I mean, they there was a lot of hollering, a lot of screaming, a lot of mama this and mama that. And I've never heard as much noise, as much crying and praying. There was 700 guns firing at the same time. And the first part of it, uh, I couldn't imagine how I could still be there and not be wounded because, you know, guys all around me was getting shot and wounded and killed. And we had people fetal on the ground, one was a sergeant, screaming, we're all gonna die. And these guys were experienced and seasoned veterans. Uh, we were pretty chewed up, so we brought our perimeter in a little bit, brought back all the guys that were killed and wounded, brought them back. They circled the wagons, formed a circle, and they drug their wounded into the middle of the circle. And that middle of the circle was a little hole to where a helicopter could come in and we were able to drop down about 100 feet before we hit the second layer. Bill's helicopter went in, and they dropped down. There was a chopper, and, and I saw someone coming down. Pitts came from here. He came down on the wire. I saw the guy coming down through the trees, and I said, and excuse my language, I said, what the fuck is he doing coming down here? I, I was the first person on the ground to see Pitts. What's the story, Lieutenant? We've got a 100-meter perimeter. We're taking fire from everywhere. And I gave him about a 15 or 20-second briefing to tell him that we had wounded, we wouldn't need it to evacuate, and we had uh, two KIA at that time, I believe. All right, I'm going to need two of your guys. It's your show, Airman. And I was told to go over there and help him. So I went from here over to there to help him load the injured on the litters. Nothing but your man into the basket! We got about, I believe it was eight of them, eight of the wounded out. In between time, before they, they get the litter down there and everything, you'd be, we'd be clearing and triaging these guys, trying to stabilize them a little bit for the trip. He went around to the perimeter and distributed ammo and food and first aid and everything, whatever they needed. Then the shit hit the fan again. Because they were surrounded 360 degrees by the Viet Cong, and they were shooting down at them from the trees. There was no place to hide. 
Bill just ignored the bullets. It was extraordinary in the fact that he turned off all the stuff that was going on around him and was determined, committed, and aggressive. It was the way he carried himself. It was like he was in charge, like nothing could hurt him. He, his, he came there to save lives, and that's, that's what he was doing. That gave us faith, because like those guys saying, we're all gonna die, it gave us some kind of hope and incentive. It, it changed the momentum. The VC started shooting at the helicopter and hit one, and Bill was still on the ground. And he waved him off. He said, I'll get the next one. I'll get the next one out. They told Pitts he could, you know, he could get on that chopper. As a matter of fact, he was ordered on, I believe, and he said, I'm needed here. Then I got hit. Pitts and Martin tore my uniform off and uh, bandaged me up. One of the charting company's men was really shot up, and he went and threw a couple bodies on top of him because the VC were coming around and shooting all the wounded. The Pitsenbarger uh, drug two dead Americans and, and laid them on top of me. And as he was as he was running away, he got killed. Much buddy, man. Why'd he do it? Why'd he do it, man? He had destination of greatness. And sadly, it had to be wasted on saving a bunch of bums like us, you know. Um, I just, if it wasn't for Pitts, you wouldn't be interviewing anybody here today. He was a brave man. That's a, a, I want to say boy, because he was 21, but he, but he was a brave PJ. It's only one story on thousands of combat stories that could be told. There's lots of heroes out there that we don't know about, but Bill's one hero that I hope we do learn about. At the risk of his own life, above and beyond the call of duty, I award the Medal of Honor to Airman First Class, William Hart Pitsenbarger.